Already we're getting some pictures of the future when we have those really large and predictable events, king tide, in uh, November, December, and January. So that's when we get uh, storm surges and exceptionally high tides that are about anywhere from 30 to sometimes 50 centimeters more twice a day. So in the future by 2050, we can expect some localized flooding twice a day. Looking to the future, we really need to plan these shorelines with sea level rise in mind. As the climate continues to get warmer due to greenhouse gas emissions, mostly from burning fossil fuels, the ocean's water levels are also rising. As the oceans get warmer, the water expands, and as ice melts from you know, the polar ice caps and glaciers, all that water gets added to the ocean, and so the seas are coming up. We've already had about 10 centimeters of rise globally, so this isn't just the problem for the future's future. This is something that we're already in the middle of, and it's only getting faster. Scientists believe that by 2050, we could see 50 centimeters of sea level rise. And by 2100, that number could be closer to a meter. And once sea levels rise above 50 centimeters, that's when our landscape could permanently change. We can expect to see some constriction of our beaches here in Vancouver. And so that's, that's called coastal squeeze. And what that means is that as the sea levels rise, that low tide mark moves up and the high tide mark, well, it kind of stays put because we're in this urban setting. 2.7 million people live in the south coast and the waterfront is the most desirable location. This map shows areas that are expected to flood by 2100, which would mean the loss of famous Vancouver beaches like Kitts, English Bay and Sunset Beach. When it comes to coastal squeeze, it's not just about potentially losing our beautiful beaches in Vancouver, but it has such a rippling effect impacting marine life, ecosystems, as well as the shorebirds that come out here and feed on the beaches. The intertidal zone is like the nursery, the kitchen, and the home for a lot of critters. And so if we see that space physically shrink, we'll expect to see some impacts to local wildlife functions of nature, of the beach, are actually being changed. So how many clams are here filtering the water and helping in that way, or helping to, you know, store carbon because you've got a nice eelgrass bed somewhere and that washes out and sinks. Uh, a lot of these things are for free doing things that benefit us. And if we lose a lot of this sort of soft sediment, sandy and muddy habitat, um, those functions are gonna be impaired as well. In 2021, the city of Vancouver launched the Sea to City project as an opportunity for host nations, designers, planners, and architects to brainstorm ideas that could help with sea level rise. Now the park board is taking some of those ideas and some new ones to create the Imagine West End Waterfront project. They've come up with three different designs to protect not only the beach, but nearby infrastructure. Seed is really focusing on natural ecology, and, and whereas Weave is more about that um, urban dynamic, public places gathering, and Carve is more about how the ocean and water interacts with the space. While all three of these designs are slightly different, they all have the same goals to protect park functionality, neighborhood connectivity and access, seawall experience, coastal shoreline habitats and restoration. All three um, are definitely focused on ecology as well as shore and um, intertidal zone. There's, there's different ways to achieve that from building out and potentially burying the seawall in places to building things like habitat islands that uh, help absorb some of that wave energy to building out and nourishing the sandy beaches out further into the waters. The park board says a master plan will be in place by early 2024 and they'll start implementing changes right away. But since it is such a large and complex project, they say work will continue until 2050.